Okay, so um, I represent uh, Jason Talley um, in the Cheshire County Superior Court. I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I'm doing this to try to help him because what has happened here is the um, the court system in New Hampshire enacted these orders restricting constitutional rights as a result of uh, a judge being caught on camera lying about someone committing a crime when it didn't happen. So. Um, this is uh, my appearance form that I filed with the court. Um, this is a power of attorney signed by Jason Talley. Um, and this is an affidavit that I filed with the court, all officiated. And this is the, um, the appearance, the motion that I filed to represent Jason Talley, signed by Judge uh, Kathleen McGuire of the Cheshire County Superior Court. So this, um, this right here shows that I officially represent Jason Talley and I have the power of the court, if you will, um, for the purpose of this case. Um, yesterday, today, what is today? I'm losing track of time. 20, not 28. 28. So yesterday on the 27th, I went to the Cheshire County Superior Court with these four subpoenas. Um, and these four subpoenas are for um, Edward Burke, who's the presiding judge of the Keene District Court, uh, excuse me, the Keene Circuit Court District Division. Um, and I have a subpoena for Chief Judge Tina Nato of the, um, of the New Hampshire Superior Court. And I have a uh, subpoena for John Arnold, John Arnold, who is the presiding judge of the Cheshire County Superior Court. And is that all four of them? Uh, judge Burke, Judge Kelly. Um, did I say Judge Kelly? No, I don't think I did. Uh, judge Kelly is the administrative judge of the uh, circuit court. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all of the subpoenas. So I have subpoenas for four judges that I brought to um, the Cheshire Superior Court to have signed by the clerk because I'm not a justice of the peace, but I can't do subpoenas because I currently represent Jason Talley. Why these people, uh, these judges are being called as witnesses is because the court order that went into effect that Jason Talley got, uh, was arrested for violating went into effect three days after a judge was caught on camera telling a lie which got uh, uh, Adam Miller of Keene, he founded coplock.org, um, got him arrested. So their response to a judge being caught on camera lying about someone threatening him and uh, sending this guy to jail for two days was not to investigate the judge but to uh, restrict constitutional freedom in New Hampshire. So I brought these subpoenas there and I filed the witness list. The uh, court clerk in Cheshire County refused to sign my subpoenas. So um, I reached out uh, to uh, George Lambert, who is a justice of the peace, and um, I've explained to him the case, um, why I believe these subpoenas are appropriate, and I've showed him these documents which show that um, you know, I officially do represent Jason Talley in the court right now, um, and that this case is pending. So uh, I'm gonna ask that um, uh, Mr. Lambert, as a justice of the peace, um, authorize these subpoenas against the four judges. Excellent. Did, well, I, did I explain that well? Well, according to the governor, I'm a justice of the peace, and I can sign these documents if you say that they are true and accurate. Um, yes, um, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe I have to sign them. I just believe um, I have to present to you like my lawful authority to subpoena somebody, and then um, they just need to be officiated in, uh, into being a state record. Um, and most attorneys are, uh, they're either commissioners of deeds or justices of the peace themselves, so mm -hmm. they, they sign them themselves. Um, certainly, I went to the Cheshire clerk to sign these because like, this is our case, this is how uh, Jason's gonna make his defense that um, you know, he wants a jury nullification defense because these court orders were put into play because a judge wrongfully got someone in prison. Mm -hmm. you know, and the public has a right to know that um, they're playing fast and loose with the Constitution like this. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have, uh, I made a bunch of copies of these, but I, I suppose just signing one of each would be uh, enough. Let's sign, let's sign them all. Sign them all. Then there'll never be a question. Nope. So today is February 28th. February 28th. 2012. <coughs> My commission expires April 28th. Do you think your wall looks bare right now? Because I just wanted to make sure there was no question about <laughs> having the governor's signature so that uh, we have his signature and my signature.
let's see. And that's the certificate of service. Um. Oh, you know what? I did that one wrong, so let me have that over here. Do you have a seal? No, just the pieces don't need a seal. They, oh, just, right. need, they just need the authority of the governor. Right. Sort of like police officers don't actually need a badge. That's cool. All they need is a certificate. Isn't that bad? Sorry, I don't write that fast. It's going to take us a couple minutes. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, I mean, again, I mean, for some reason, I printed out three copies of these. Three copies of each one. And when anyone to say that you don't have what you need, it's time for some accountability. And we're going to take these and we're going to give them to the sheriff uh, to serve. We're not going to try to track these judges down ourselves. You know, the sheriff's department can handle this a lot better than we can. They guard the courthouses, don't they? They guard the courthouses, so all they need to do is walk next door and hand it to the judges. And um, I suspect that they're going to want to uh, keep these judges from coming to court um, to be answer questions about why they enacted court orders to restrict constitutional rights as a result of someone uh, exercising a constitutional right. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how they explain it. to probably, I've got to go to two different sheriff's departments, to Cheshire County and to Merrimack County, probably tomorrow. Merrimack, why, why Merrimack? Because um, Administrative Judge Edwin Kelly works in Concord. And um, honestly, I, honestly, I don't know where Chief Judge uh, Tina Nato's office is for the Superior Court. I, I presume it's in Concord also. Yep. Um, so, I, you know, the Merrimack County Sheriff's Department would handle that. And then the uh, Cheshire County Sheriff's Department could serve Judge Burke and uh, Presiding Judge Arnold. And um, I, like I said, I filed a motion uh, to have criminal depositions of the judges. I've asked uh, Judge McGuire to uh, compel these judges to uh, answer questions. Um, and I even, I'd be happy to do it at the county attorney's office, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in Keene, you know, in, just so I can answer, uh, ask questions about why they decided to issue these court orders that got uh, Jason Talley ensnared in this when all he wanted to do was bring a camera into court. You know, he wasn't even recording. He just had it clipped on his belt, and the bailiffs pulled him out of line. And You know, I mean, just the mere possession of anything that can hold government officials accountable uh, is enough to be arrested. Doesn't the New Hampshire Constitution say that the judges, officers, and magistrates of the state shall be accountable to the people at all times? Part 1, Article 8, and also Part 1, Article 22 pretty clearly says that the, free <coughs> excuse me, the freedom of the press shall be inviolably preserved. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be inviolably preserved when judges are, you know, manipulating their authority under Part 2, Article 73A um, to enact rules that have the force and effect of law to cover up for when someone breaks the law. I testified against that in, uh, in the State House um, and a CACR to actually repeal that, yeah. which is a, con a proposal for a constitutional amendment to try to fix it. Yeah. <coughs> That's a very, very big deal. 
Uh, I think this is going to be a very big deal, and it's probably going to be an example of why the judges in New Hampshire need to be brought back under the control of the people. Well, there's a big concern about activism from the bench, is what they, is what they call it online. Uh, apparently, a lot of people have big concerns about it. Well, I mean, look how e look how unaccountable. I'm, I cannot are. believe you could not get these documents signed at a courthouse. <laughs> the clerk of the court refused to sign uh, subpoenas. And if, like, say for instance, I was admitted to represent Jason Talley, and then I went and just started subpoenaing everyone for no reason, like, I could be held in serious trouble for that. Yes. Because you can't abuse the power of the court. Of course. But, um, you know, the, the defense that uh, Jason and I have decided on is that the jury needs to be made aware of uh, the fact that these judges are not holding themselves accountable. And um, the jury, you know, we want to ask uh, for a jury nullification instruction so that the jury can hold the judiciary accountable by finding Jason not guilty. Because all he did was possess a camera. All he did is possess a camera. That's it. Going to fill out the paperwork. Going to fill out the paperwork to film in court. He possessed a camera. And that was the third court order that was issued by presiding judge John Arnold on July 15th. And that order expanded the order issued by uh, Chief Justice Tina, uh, Tina Nato on July 1st, and her order mimicked the, judge, uh, the order issued by Administrative Law Judge Edwin Kelly on July 1st, three days after Judge Burke told a lie and had uh, Adam Miller of Keene put in jail. I, found, I, I saw that video. It, I was heartbroken. When I saw it. Me because, too. Yeah. Because where was the threat? There is no threat. No threat. It's no constitutionally protected no activity. It was just questioning. He oh. called him sir. He called him judge. He asked questions about the use of taxpayer money to do something, and he asked questions about public policy. His voice wasn't even raised. No. He was quite calm. He was professional. He was acting as a member of the media, and I'm sorry, but judges can't just can't you know twist their wrist and you know wiggle their nose and then disappear people who ask questions they don't want to answer. At least that's not the way it's supposed to be. Well, maybe he's not a member of the media because, you know, maybe nobody reads his blog or posts. Tens of thousands of people do, <laughs> you know? Well, then I guess that makes him a larger publication than some of the newspapers that are community newspapers in yep. the state. Yep. Interesting. But, you know, the, the, the real, the real uh, thing is, is that, uh, you know, the cop block website that Ademo owns, and in the interest of full disclosure, I write on cop block myself, I write my opinions about government accountability and stuff. Um, but his view is not mainstream and popular, so it, you know, to me, it just looks like they're yes, trying. Been yeah, they're trying to marginalize a, a unpopular opinion. Um, well, actually, I don't care whether it's popular. I care whether it's constitutional because, at the end of the day, constitutional is how we are supposed to actually yes. frame the accountability of our courts, of yes. our legislature and everything else. So if you're telling me this is legal and constitutional, then here are your documents because there's no need for us to further obstruct the process. And you now have your signed subpoenas, sir. And this one is for Mr. Kelly. This one is for Mr. Arnold. And this is for Mr. Arnold. You are all set. It is now time for you to go and hold these judges accountable. Please let me know how it goes in court. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It is my pleasure. If there's anything else I can do for you, if you need to depose them, please let me know. <laughs> um, and uh, I will happily show up and make sure that we get their statements. And, and, and that they, they take an oath. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Happy day.